Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, a couple of years ago, I did a video about this gun, the HK P30SK. In that video, I described this as the perfect carry gun. Well, not everyone's going to agree with you when you make an assessment on what you think is perfect. But 5,000 rounds later, I decided to do a follow-up video about this gun. And so the question remains, do I still think this is the perfect carry gun, or have I updated my opinion? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us today. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've watched our videos before and just haven't had a chance to do so before now, and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen there, or if you're on a mobile device, you can just scroll down below the video, and you can hit the subscribe button that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So, the P30SK. Once again, I've had this firearm for a good long time. I got it when it first came out. I remember getting the call from my gun shop saying, hey, we just got these in, you should come check it out. And I literally left at that moment and went down and looked at the gun. And I left with one. Now, at the time that I bought it, there were some limitations as far as um, features. It's the first run. But, and, and some of it had to do with availability and things like that. But, but the one that I chose for that day, now the action was intentional. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. But before I start getting into these details, let me just do a quick safety check. You can see that we are clear. And you can see that we are clear. So, as we continue here, this has got the um, little glow sights on it, which are okay. You know, it's a nice white dot setup, basically. And you hit it with a flashlight, they will glow pretty brightly for a period of time after you remove the light. Um, I think a regular set of night sights is probably a better long-term solution, but it's not bad. And um, at the time, I didn't, uh, didn't really care that much. I was just pretty excited to get the gun. It has some big gun features that I like. Um, it's got really good solid serrations. The slide is very, very solid and well-made, but it doesn't feel bulky. You've got an accessory rail on the front, which is something that I won't particularly use on a carry gun, but there are those that will. Uh, to me, adding a flashlight or a laser, some kind of bulk to this gun, is going the opposite direction of what I try to do with a carry gun, which is making it larger. But the area where it really, really scores huge points Trigger guard, number one, is fantastic. Um, I love this big trigger guard. I've got long fingers. And if you don't have the longest fingers in the world, those little tiny trigger guards, I just feel like you have to really work to get your finger in there. I don't like that. I like to be able to hold my firearm, index that trigger, you know, and when I need to get off the trigger guard, I can just drop right in very easily. So I think that's a great, great design. Um, the ergonomics between the you know, this P30 style grip, you've got the finger grooves and the plates that can be removed to make this thicker and to make the um, make it wider and thicker. I think that that is a good thing because hand sizes are going to vary. And I think that uh, with the medium back strap, um, this gun is almost like it was made for my hand. I really like it. Now, I chose the Lem trigger for mine. And of course, without getting into all the details on that, that's the law enforcement modification. You know, it's this base long uh, double action only trigger is what this is. And it's got an interesting feel to it. It's not for everyone, but I really do enjoy it. One of the main reasons I went with this over the uh, double action, single action, number one, there were some availability issues at the moment that I was looking at it. Um, the other thing is, is that I've had a chance to use the gun when the other configuration, and I'll show you what I mean. On, I have a P2000 SK that is equipped with the double single, and you see this location for the decocker? It's a little lever right next to the hammer there. Um, I'm not a fan of this. Um, I don't mind the hammer, obviously. I've got plenty of double singles, but uh, I don't like this. I like HK's, you know, standard decocking and safety lever position. And since that was the option, I didn't really want that. And I feel like I made the right decision because I've been extremely happy 
with the ergonomics and operation of that firearm to date. In the time that I've had mine, they have come up with a lot of upgrades um, for the weapon, which uh, I think was a good thing. Um, I told you about, you know, the magazine. And, you know, you got your 10-round magazine here. And, when, and this is another plus. It's nothing that makes this a great concealed carry gun. Um, you've got minimum, you've got your 10 rounds, so 10 plus 1 of 9 millimeter. Well, since it was developed, they've also come up with the 13-round and they have the pinky extender version here. And, of course, you have your extended with the little um, larger piece on the body. The way I carry mine is with the regular 10-round magazine. This is one of the few guns I've ever carried where I can put two fingers on a two-finger grip and feel completely confident that I have an excellent grip on the firearm. This is probably the best two-finger grip of any gun that I've ever handled. But you do have those magazine upgrades available. They've also made changes. Um, there are different sites available now. Um, like I say, at the time, you can only get a couple of configurations. But you've got the, the glow sights, um, you know, the fluorescent ones here. And then uh, you've got actual Trigicon night sights now. And there are many other options that you can get for the gun now. So you can have just about whatever configuration that you like in the handgun. So... As far as operation, another thing that I really felt was a, a big deal for this gun was how well it shoots. Um, like I say, once again, this is a limb trigger, and a lot of people take issue with the limb trigger if they're not used to it. It didn't bother me that much, and I guess the main reason why the limb trigger did not bother me is because I was used to it already. Um, I spent quite a bit of time with an HK that had a limb trigger as a duty weapon. So back in the day when I had this HK USP 40, which also has the limb trigger, um, I got used to this and I actually like it quite a bit. Now it is unusual if you're used to shooting double action or if you're used to shooting any type of firearm, um, the limb trigger is gonna be a little bit weird, but I like it. And um, I think that it has proven to be a very good operating, very smooth shooting gun. It's also very, very good as far as not being picky with ammo. Now, I typically don't have trouble with my HKs when it comes to ammo anyway. Um, at the range, I'm going to typically use SMB. I've got PMC. I've got Winchester. Um, Blazer Brass. I don't use as much Blazer anymore because for some reason um, I've had some quality issues with that. Um, not blaming them specifically, but I've had a bad box here and there and I kind of stayed away from it. As far as defensive ammo, um, I'm very partial to number one, the Sig V Crown. There's a couple different versions of that I like to play with. The 124 and the 115. Um, ultimately, the 115 usually ends up being my most accurate round. Uh, of course, I've got the Gold Dot 124 grain, and I've got some of the Critical Duty um, 135 Flex Lock. These are all great, and I've got others. I've got some Barnes TAC XPD. I've got tons of... I've got some Remington Defense 9. Everything that I've put through this gun, it's been absolutely no problem. But the most accurate uh, round for this one for me has been um, this. And this is how I've determined which ammo I'm actually carrying in the gun, is I will shoot several different types of defensive ammunition under the exact same conditions and whichever ammo gives me the most consistently good grouping um, smoothly and uh, no issues is going to be the one I go with. And in this case the V Crown uh, the 115 grain was the winner and that's what I decided to go with. But looking at all the different ammo types I've used there's been no issues whether it's range ammo or defensive ammo. So there's a few more things to talk about that I think are important. Comfort, um, comfort is a big one. I mentioned that in the beginning that if you don't, uh, if you're not comfortable carrying the weapon, you just won't do it. I've got so many different ways to carry this firearm. Um, got a lot of holsters I really like. I've got some single clip holsters. I've got some double clip holsters. I've got a little bit of everything. And no matter what I put this gun in, it seems to be a small enough print on the body um, that I don't really notice that it's there, not like some of the other guns I have that are in a similar size category. It's just the right profile that if you have it in a good holster, it kind of just disappears in your waistline. 
and it doesn't print. Uh, for me, it doesn't print. And that's one reason why I've stuck with the standard magazine, because for what little you gain by going with one of these larger magazines, you are gaining more sticking out, uh, potentially, to be spotted under your shirt or whatever. So the other thing that I think we need to talk about here is, is actually how the gun has held up as far as wear and tear. So once again, let me take the magazine out here. But I want you to take a look at this. And I want you to pay very close attention to the components. Because remember what I said, this is a 5,000 round test. There's some metal exposed here, some metal exposed here. There's some exposed metal on my barrel. But not like what I would have thought. Not even close. And before someone says, well, that's, that's you know, uh, there's no way. There's There's got to be more wear than that on the gun. Well, not really, because I have some previous guns that have set a pretty good precedent for that. Once again, I was talking about my duty weapon. This H&K has probably got closer to 10,000 rounds through it. And if you'll notice, you can definitely see where some of the finish has been coming off. And that's expected. It's got a few scratches and dings and from being, you know, handled and things happen at the range and all that kind of good stuff and putting it back together and cleaning it. But as far as wear and tear, there is just not a lot of obvious um, damage to the firearm. And now I do take good care of my guns. If I shoot the gun, when I bring it home from the range, I do clean it and I do put a little bit of oil into the metal components and I do rub it in for protection. Um, I try to keep it clean until it gets shot again. And this particular gun, I don't think I've dropped it. Um, I've used it a lot. I've done a lot of different drills with it. So it, this one hasn't hit the ground before. So there's no gouges. There's no, there's no range damage to the gun. But just as far as operation, I'm very impressed with how little wear that the gun displays. And that's a testament to the quality. When people ask me why I spend the money that I do for, say, an HK or any other firearm that costs a little bit more money, I tell them, well, to me, quality is worth a little bit more. I believe that H&K has put the money into the design and into the materials of this gun to make it good. So, reflecting on the firearm, a couple of years ago, I said it was the perfect carry gun. Do I still feel that way? Absolutely. Even with all the new options available, Yes, I've realized that I can have a Hellcat that's tinier with higher capacity, and I can do that with um, a SIG P365. And yes, there's lots of guns like that now that have a smaller overall um, size. They're a little bit lighter, and yes, they have more capacity. But does that make them better? No, not necessarily. Not for me. And you have to remember, a carry gun's a personal choice. Now, there are many people who would never carry a P30SK, just not their cup of tea, and I get that. They may be bound to a certain type of gun. They may be a revolver person. You may be a Smith person. You know, you may be a Springfield person. And if you can shoot those guns well and those guns meet your needs, that's exactly what you need to do. I'm very much a believer in when I find something that works well for me, I stick with it. The P30SK, ever since I've gotten it, has been the perfect carry gun. And 5,000 rounds later, I still feel the exact same way. All right. That's going to do it for today. I appreciate you being with me as always. And uh, as always, we'll be back soon with another video for us. Everybody stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.